Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. Far to more dear to many, respected clergy, and dearly beloved. I'm coming to you to speak to you today about many things in this time of this pandemic. We are faced with unprecedented times of uncertainty. And in those times, it is common to ask the question, why are these bad things happening? Why do bad things happen? That is my talk today. It's on why bad things happen, the Christian look at grief, loss, and struggle. Why do bad things happen? Who is at fault? Did God leave us? Are we being punished? Are we all alone? These are among the most common questions we as human beings and Christians have during periods of strife. At this time of the pandemic, we are faced with challenges to the very core of our lives. The answers to these questions are complex, yet amazingly simplified by Jesus Christ. It is best summed up in a chant for Holy Communion at Pesach, the Syriac. Rosalie, Rosalie, Emaron, the local tesh bato adanodarabo Malayalam Jehasyam Jehasyam Odeyo Odarudi Jehasyam Nenikyum Enve Tugarkum so he the English mystery, mystery, Lord said, mystery. Mystery for me and my household. Heavenly Lord God, glorious bridegroom, we do proclaim praise to the Lord. Mystery, Jehesia, Rosalie. What does this mean? As a practicing doctor and ICU hospital medicine specialist, I am on the front lines of this recent COVID-19 pandemic. As such, unfortunately, I've had the firsthand experience of dealing with patients and families during their most vulnerable and grief-stricken moments. From the young man afflicted with the virus, relegated to a ventilator on multiple IV meds to keep him alive as I place a catheter into his heart to the elderly patient who has progressively worsened despite aggressive care and ops for hospice. I have been and seen this tragedy up close and the names and faces are burned within me. The cold touch of their hands grasping mine as they take their last breaths. My prayers are with them as is my reassurance that they are not alone. So how do we know? because he has said so. We are not alone. This must come to pass. As difficult as this concept is, I would like to explore this reality that is founded in some of the final words of our Lord prior to his crucifixion. Rosalie, the mystery. St. Matthew chapter 13, verse 35 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, and I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. St. Mark chapter 4, verses 11 to 12 says, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear 
and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. The Reverend Dr. Billy Graham was once asked, if there's so much Christianity and God in the world, then why do bad things happen? Dr. Graham's response was very illuminating. He said, Christianity is like soap. It requires daily personal application. In other words, you can't be in a room full of soap and expect to be clean. Personal application, using the soap, applying the mysteries that are right in front of us. So why do bad things occur? The answers become clear as we examine three key aspects of the scripture. God is love, prayer is vital, and submission to the will of God. The first one, God is love, the blind man who sinned. Jesus is asked this very question in St. John chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered and said, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. St. John chapter 9, verses 4 to 5, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So with God, the light, all things are possible. But the world is divided as night is from day, and evil is allowed to exist. But he, Jesus Christ, illuminates us and gives us the way. Again, in St. Matthew chapter 18, verses 7 through 11, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom those offenses come. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Who is Christ speaking of? Which man is he referring to? An evil man, the original evil one. And who are the little ones? Us. Take a look closer and you see the truth as plain as day. There, T H E I R, their angels do always behold. Behold the face of my Father. God is love, and he loves us infinitely. We as parents know how to give that which is good to our children. How much more infinitely does our Heavenly Father want to give to us? In that keeping, he protects us, keeps us in his love. Yes, bad things must come. They must happen. Why? Due to the choices and free will we are given. The great Christian apologist, Rabbi Zachariah, talks about this. Free will. Why? Because God wants us to love him on our own volition, not because someone forced us or threatened us or coerced us, but because we choose him. Dr. Zacharias says, a rich man had a huge estate. One day, 30 horses showed up. The neighbor stopped and said, oh, it's good luck those horses came. The next day, his son is riding on one of these horses and it rears up and he throws him off. He breaks his leg, and the neighbor appears again and says, Oh, it's very bad luck those horses came. The next day, a local gang is recruiting a new, its new members and stops at the rich man's house and leaves the son alone due to his lame status. The neighbor comes over and states that the horses are good luck. Good luck, bad luck, any luck. We are a product of the choices we make and the circumstances we find ourselves in. That is why bad things occur. So what do we do? We stay in this light. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world. So how do we do that? The second point, prayer is vital. Moses was desperate, lost, and wandering the Median desert. Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, And now I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Moses wanted to investigate the angel and the flame. 
that did not consume the bush. He was fascinated. God had to refocus him, much like he refocuses us through prayer. Prayer, which is direct communication with God and not being sidetracked or lost. It is difficult, but through this, God's holy plan is revealed. The ground is holy and venerated by God. Keep in that prayer. Focus on him. And in Moses' case, take off your shoes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, another great example. Daniel chapter 3, verse 23 to 25. And the three, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were fell bound down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. In prayer they were bound down, thrown down by the evil one. Yet through prayer and communion with God, they were freed. And what did the oppressors see? Not three, but four people. And the last one, the Son of God. They were not alone because of prayer. Not just metaphorically, but actually, physically. The physical world is real. So Christ is always with us. We are never alone. Like the poem, Footprints in the Sand. In essence, this is possible through continual prayer. Again, in the Transfiguration, another great example, St. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 30. And it came to pass, about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and James and John and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. And yet the most prominent example of prayer's necessity was in the Lord's Passion, the Garden of Gethsemane. St. Luke chapter 22, verses 40 to 46. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that he entered not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them, about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So Christ suffered a series of very bad things. He shows us that bad things happen and must happen. It is allowed by him for his purpose that he may not, that these purposes may not be evident to us, but it is God's choice. Again, this is evident in John chapter 10, verses 17 to 18. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and sweat as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. And he rose up from prayer, and must come to his disciples, and he found them sleeping for sorrow, and saith unto them, why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 says, Watch and pray, that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Christ is God become man, omnipotent, omniscient, with and through whom all things are possible. He chose to become man, suffer, die and was buried and in three days he has risen all things are possible with christ and yet in his passion at his most vulnerable state what was most important prayer and what does prayer show us that by submitting ourselves to the one who sacrificed himself we in turn sacrifice ourselves and offer ourselves as a pleasing sacrifice to god our heavenly father how you ask by the total submission to his will, bringing us to the last point, submission to God. Moses at the bush, Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, here I am. St. Mary's Annunciation, St. Luke chapter 1, verse 37 to 38, for with God nothing shall be impossible. 
And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And again, Jesus Christ in his divine passion, St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And the ultimate example, when we receive Holy Corbona, we are making ourselves into the living, breathing cup, the chalice that submits to the will of God and receives his holy body and blood. And in so doing, we are taking the hot coals of fire placed into Isaiah's mouth by the seraphim. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 5 to 7 says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of an unclean people. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the holy altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Isaiah in this passion gives a confession, and then is given holy corbono. We as Christians are afforded the same privilege when we are taking part in the holy corbono. While it is virtual right now, due to the social distancing placed upon us by the authorities, we are in spirit one in Christ. This is reiterated in our Holy Communion hymn again. ஆடேமன் <laughs> Kandeva nam modu sachi kyunu, Deva tvatin, Madi ele pureha, Siang eleva, Eva ne shayi, Ladam yakai, Agi ye kyunu. At whose sight the seraphs tremble, you see him as bread and wine upon the altar at whose sight the lightning-clothed burn. Faces of mortals who eat him are joyful. Secrets of the sun, circled by fire, are known to the residents of heaven. Isaiah, who witnessed those, testifies to us. Those secrets sit on the lap of divinity and divided on the altar for the children of Adam. Secrets of the sun, the mystery, Dehesion, Rosalie, this is the secret that Christ revealed. The fruit of the tree of life that was concealed from Adam and Eve is now freely given to you. And by his love and continual prayer and total submission to his will, we are healed and born again. Nothing can harm you, not even death. We are not alone. He is always with us, around us, among us, and within us. We are the living vessels that carry the holy body and blood of our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. The true light that shines even in the darkest hour. When bad things happen, he redeems us, protects us, and guides us. All right, you May the love of God the Father, the grace and mercies of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the intercession and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever and ever. Amen.